Houston, of course, playing against the Marlins tonight. The Cardinals continuing their three-game set with the Pirates. With my partner, Al Roboski, I'm Dan McLaughlin, and welcome to Cardinals baseball. And it's a chance once again for Chris Carpenter to one-up Dontrell Willis, who won last night. Carpenter going for victory number 22 tonight. Well, Carpenter has just phenomenal numbers. He's got a career-high 13-game winning streak, and you can see he's done it in such dominant fashion. He dominates in the central division, dominates at night, dominates whenever he's on the mound, and he is something special looking for his first Cy Young. Now, Bob Gibson won at one point 15 straight. That's a Cardinals record. Carpenter has won 13 straight. We're going to talk about how home runs can make a difference tonight. We'll tell you about it when we come back on FSN. Pull around for Chris Carpenter. A few warm-up tosses, and he is set to go as we welcome you back to Bush Stadium, a special night for the hurricane relief here on FSN and across the United States. Chris Carpenter will be looking for victory number 22 tonight. The Cardinals trying to reduce the magic number to at least three. We'll keep an eye on what happens with Florida. And Houston, St. Louis comes in with a record of 92 and 53. The Pirates are 57 and 86. They're in the cellar of the Central Division. And here we go. The first pitch, a strike at 7.09 to Tyke Redmond, who's hitting 251 on the year. A couple of home runs, 23 RBIs, 79 degrees our game time temperature. That one is hit to first and handled easily by our buddy John Mabry with Albert Pujols on the bench once again tonight, and the leadoff man is retired. Chris Carpenter pitching. You expect a lot of ground balls, and you can expect strikeouts. Second in the National League in strikeouts. Albert will miss a second game. He did get a key pinch hit assignment last night and delivered and tied the score. They're trying to rest that uh, pull deductor. Just a strain there. Here's Freddy Sanchez. He looks at a strike. Where do we begin when we talk about the stats concerning Chris Carpenter and where he stands in the race for the Cy Young Award? Here comes an 0 1 pitch. Another chance for Mabry. Quickly two down. Chris Carpenter is tied for first in victories with Dontra Willis. Those two with 21. He has a winning streak of 13 games. He's got seven complete games this season. I'm not done. Here's the lineup for the Pirates brought to you by Dodge. We've just seen Redmond and Sanchez. And now it's Jason Bay, another solid year for him. McCobiak, the cleanup man. Then Craig Wilson, Ryan Dumit, Eldred, Romaniak, and then Snell. Innings pitched at 220 this season. They have been piling up with all the complete games for Chris Carpenter. 198 strikeouts. Second best in the league. Breakdown of his season brought to you by Advanced Auto Parts. You see five and one career against the Pirates. He's won all the starts this year. Watch out. As you said, with two strikeouts, he will become the first Cardinal to strike out 200 batters since Jose De Leon back in 1989. He's second currently in the league in strikeout departments. Everything else just about first or second. And he has got Bay with a ball and two strikes. Here it comes. Hit left side, taken there by Nunez. Easy inning for Mr. Carpenter. Pirates go one, two, three, bottom of the first, and here come the Redbirds. Up his piled up wins and lofty averages. The offense has been very good for the Cardinals. It's brought to you by Dodge, Eckstein, Nunez, and Edmonds here in the first. Walker will bat cleanup. Then Sanders, Mabry, Molina, Luna, and Carpenter. Cardinals coming up for their first time in this ball game. There's no score, bottom of the first. And here's David Eckstein against Ian Snell and his numbers brought to you by Rico who in the heck is this guy Al? Well he's a young man that has a great young arm but doesn't have the experience to match it. He's 23 years of age. He was 11 and 3 and 18 starts at Indy. 0 and 2 here in the big leagues. As Kerry Robinson told Jim Hayes on the pregame show he faced him. Kerry the former Cardinal who is in attendance tonight wrapped up his season with Richmond of uh, AAA with the Atlanta Braves. He'll throw 94 95 as you see right there in our graphic two balls and no strikes and the fastball sets up the curveball according to our buddy Kerry and the whole key is that breaking ball if he has a good one and it is very inconsistent he can pitch a gym and he did that at triple A this year when he threw a no hitter on May 15th 3 0 pitch to Eckstein not even close four straight and a leadoff walk. 
Auto tire defense. Around the horn we go. A look at the Pirates defense. Bay, Redmond, and Craig Wilson. That's him right there. Featured in our auto tire defense. McCobiak, Sanchez, Fermaniak, and Eldred on the infield. And Ryan Dumit is behind the plate. Another crowd of 40,000 plus expected tonight. 36 straight games of 40,000 plus. Here's the former Pirate switch hitter Abraham Nunez. That's five straight balls thrown by Snell. That was not an easy play to end the top half of this inning for Nunez moving to his left and a ball that kind of skipped on him. It looked like it hit the lip where the grass meets the dirt and came up and uh, he stayed with it. Long look over at first. Eckstein a very short lead. Now since the Cardinals out haven't seen Snell all that much on tape how aggressive do you think they'd be in the running game early on against him maybe trying to put pressure on him or do you try to get a read and then maybe steal some bases later in the game you might look at it a couple different ways one you can be very aggressive force this team to make mistakes a couple rookies in this battery or you can go out there and wait till he starts throwing strikes and have that hitter be in a position to protect the base runner if need be. Nunez a swing and a foul back. Count of one ball, two strikes, and a 94 mile an hour fastball. Ian Snell matched up with Chris Carpenter tonight. 20 Welcome back to the bigs. 26 pick in the 2000 draft. He has a career mark in the minor leagues, six minor league seasons of 58 and 19. He's been an all star, double A, triple A. Nunez slaps it back in, foul and out of play. Five home runs have already been hit across Major League Baseball. That's great to hear as, of course, FSN is behind the relief effort of Hurricane Katrina. And uh, across the country, our FSN regions are donating $1,000 for every home run hit. Our parent company, News Corps, has also donated $1 million. Snell doesn't get the call there. It's two and two. Now would David Eckstein be off and running here from first base with the count even two balls and two strikes. Now the Cardinals have had a tendency to manufacture more runs this year. But remember you got your big horse Carpenter going so you don't have to push things. Swing and a miss. Nunez strikes out on a ball. Swung through it and it brings in Edmonds. Edmonds was over four last night. Tim Edmonds thinks he's found a little mechanical flaw in a swing. And he said last night, he's been thinking about it for a couple days, last night he tried too hard to putting his into practice. And he's gonna, his whole key was to try and concentrate this tonight. I'm backing down a little bit. One of his problems is the wide stance. It's been a little bit too wide. His hands have been, he's been, uh, you know, too low. And, you know, he's trying to keep it, get hit rhythm. Get a little rhythm into his swing. He's too good of a hitter to be hitting 259 this year. He's deep in the box. You can see that back foot on the chalk, and that's fouled back, and it's nothing in two. The interesting thing is that as you look at the, the stance, you know, he was saying he was getting too wide, and then he was in rocking back. But you can do it in batting practice, but all of a sudden you get in a game that's tough to do. And, you know, he looks just as wide as ever right now. Nothing in two is the count. It's amazing how Edmonds is able to hit for power. He doesn't even pick up hardly at all off the ground. His front foot, it's just a little bit of a rotation, a rock back like you said, Al, and then explodes into the baseball. And he's got tremendous power to the opposite field. But really, that's how a lot of modern-day players hit. Albert Pujols is a guy that does that, too. Well, you don't get fooled by a lot of off-speed pitches. So the key to a lot of that power and the good hitter that he is is that wide base. But at times, you can get too wide, and then you feel like you've got to sit back on your leg, you're rocking forward, and then your timing is off. Two and two the count. Larry Walker is on deck, batting cleanup tonight. You know, with, with the less movement, and you'll be able to get to the ball with your hands. And I think a lot of uh, th with success with Jim is he trusts his hands so well. Edmonds is sitting on 26 home runs. Nether check swing. 
And the count has run to three and two. He just held up. And see defensively some room into right center. That gives you an idea of the power that Edmonds has to the opposite field as he sprays it all over the place. That center fielder, Redmond, is playing a little shallow for Edmonds. Runner is going to the opposite field. Left center, and it's two to nothing, Cardinals. Edmonds with number 27. that home run FSN Midwest is happy to write a check for a thousand dollars the hurricane relief three two pitch you saw the running action away but because the hands were right there he was able to go to the opposite field like we talked about Jim felt like he was starting to get closer also talking about how he's really trying to get uh, the RBIs With that home run, FSN Midwest donates $1,000 to the Red Cross as part of our round trippers for relief. So at least that six that we know of hit across Major League Baseball tonight. And of course, you can donate by calling the Red Cross at 1-800-HELP-NOW. Edmonds now nine RBIs away from 1,000 for his career. And his 27th home run, 82 on the year. Walker strikes out as they toss down to first. Two strikeouts in the inning for Ian Snell. But a 2-0 Cardinals lead in a way that Chris Carpenter has been so locked in. That may be all that you need here tonight. And because Carpenter is so good, and because the team now has given him a 2-0 lead, a lot of times the offense can relax a little bit, and then you see a real explosion. Last night it seemed to be kind of tight. It took a while for this offense to get going. Well, that's when you have somebody out there and you know that maybe it's, uh, you know, going to be a battle. And I wouldn't say that with Mulder because he's second, appears to be the second best pitcher. And Pujols and Edmonds talking about that blast. But it did appear that the offense was a little tight. Reggie Sanders fouls it away and into the seats as this crowd is still arriving tonight. Asked Reggie after playing yesterday for the first time in nearly two months because of the broken leg. Asked him, are you a little bit sore today? And I got the affirmative. And you get the feeling that Al McRae awfully happy to see Reggie back in there. And of course, like you said, Al, working extra with Jim Edmonds prior to the game tonight and seeing some results. But that's it. You know, you can, when you can in your mind think that you figure things out, and then you can get the positive results and it just sends you on your way. And you know when Jim Edmonds gets hot, he can carry you. And a swing and a miss as Snell strikes out the side, but he walks a man, Eckstein, and gives up the home run to Edmonds. Two to nothing after one inning of play. Nothing lead here in the second. That one is hit to the opposite way. One pitch, one out. Off the bat of McCombiak to Reggie Sanders. Two to nothing Cardinals on Edmonds, 27th home run of the year. Nine pitches and four outs for Chris Carpenter. And in between innings, he wastes no time, Al. I know you love to see it. He gets from the dugout and jogs. It's a fast sprint onto the mound, and he's ready to take his warm up tosses and get things going. If you're the opposition and you watch a pitcher hustle out there, take his warm up pitches, wait to get out there, and stand there, defy you to hit off them. You know, you know he has that mound presence that you really want to see. And he's telling you, you're going to have a rough night. And you're going to be going back to the dugout. This one is hit in the air. To deep right field. Walker back, backing up in front of the 372 side. Two down. Seems like every team we face that uh, Chris Carpenter faces, they come away just uh, in awe of the way that he has pitched this year. The defense behind him, brought to you by Auto Tires, Sanders, Edmonds, Walker, Nunez, Eckstein, Luna, and Mabry on the infield, Molina behind the plate. He's got four pitches, and I can't remember a time that he's gone out there, Al, where all four pitches have not been working. And if it hasn't worked early on, he's found it midway through the game. That's a sign of the good pitchers. One, he has the assortment. 
He's had good stuff all season long. Arguably maybe one or two games he, he didn't have it. He's got to be Dave Duncan's dream. That's the first base hit for Pittsburgh. But he, he pitches to contact. He's not afraid to, to throw strikes. If a guy gets a base hit, so be it. And I've talked to him about that. He says, you know, I learned that from Roger Clemens and Woody Williams when I was in Toronto. Yeah, you, you try to get people out on your first or second pitch. If you happen to get to two strikes, then you can think about striking them out. But prior to that, you want to try and get a batter out with as few pitches as possible. That's why he's got seven complete games and four shutouts. That's right. Strikeouts are great, but your pitch count gets high and you can't go deeper into games where if you pitch to contact, you can get a guy out on one pitch and it's still the same result. It's an out. I remember two years ago when he was recovering from his shoulder series surgery. I remember he came down to Florida, came down to Miami in late April. And the Cardinals were playing the, the Marlins and Carpenter was an extended spring. It came down and he threw a simulated game. And there was a guy, it was, I think it was Kerry Robinson. But he told me, he said, he faced Carpenter in that simulated game and Carpenter had the best stuff he saw all season long. And that was the year that after that he tried to throw too hard too early and he missed all that season. So. When he was hurt, he had the best stuff Kerry Robinson saw all year. Brad Eldred is hitting 246, seven homers, 18 RBIs. That one drops in there for a strike, and it's two and two. And to me, this is the difference in this team going into postseason play. If you have to face Chris Carpenter in game one, that sets the tone for the entire series. And unfortunately, he had that mysterious nerve impingement last year, missed postseason. Pitch misses inside, and it's three and two. And like a Roger Clemens or the guy I use as an example, Tom Seaver, is you can't appreciate how tough they are until they get a guy or two on base. Then they really bear down. Dumit is the runner at the first base, and Mabry will back up. Foul tip. I don't think uh, people are all that concerned about the innings piling up here in late September, as Chris Carpenter is now at 221 on the year. Number one in the National League. The Cardinals are not worried about it because they have stated that he will pitch every fifth day. If they have to bypass somebody, they'll do it, but they want to keep him on schedule. Another 3 2 pitch. The runner is going with two down, and it's fouled by Eldred. Cardinals lead it 2 0 here in the top of the second at Bush Stadium. We'll peel off number seven tonight in our Bush Beer countdown. Magic number at four at the start of play tonight. Cardinals with that home run have raised a thousand dollars. The donation to the Red Cross by FSN. Three two pitch. Foul back again. Just below us here in our broadcast booth. Eldred is five for seven with a double in his last two games. He's hit a total of 35 home runs this season eight in his last 50 at bats and started at double A went to triple A and now he finds himself in the big leagues and it's a walk by Carpenter so runners at first and second with two outs here in the second inning it's another aspect to Carpenter's game that's about as many as he gives up in, a, in nine innings a little bit more than one JJ for maniac will be the hitter second baseman for Pittsburgh just called up today and that guy Kerry Robinson said he's never played he, seen him play second base they were teammates at Portland as he came over in a midseason trade from the San Diego Padres organization a real scrappy little ball player and has good power to right center Carpenter steps off the rubber Nice cool night here at the ballpark. First and second, the 0 1 pitch, another curveball. Beauty for strike two. We'd love to get the eighth place hitter here and leave the pitcher on deck to start the third. This is Major League debut for JJ, and we'll see what, how he fares against another curveball. Why not? As JJ was. Uh, 
backing away from those first two breaking balls and saying, I didn't see this at Old Portland. Well, that one's pretty up. good. That one hung up a little bit, giving him a chance. But as we said, now that he's got two strikes, Carpenter can think about putting him away via the strikeout. Albert Pujols always talking, hitting down there in the dugout. No two pitch. Sharply hit to the second baseman. That's Luna. Pirates strand two. Cardinals coming up in their half of the second. Mabry, Molina, and Luna do up with Pujols on the bench tonight. Cardinals on standings for the wild card race. The Marlins lead it by a half game over Houston. Those two hooking up tonight. The Phillies a game back. The Nationals four out. And how about Milwaukee led by Ned Yost? They're five and a half games out. Florida, top of the third, leading their ball game one to nothing. We'll keep an eye on that. $1,000 has been raised and donated by FSN tonight for the Red Cross with a home run by Jim Edmonds. And it's two to nothing Cardinals as Mabry will dig in against Snell, who struck out the side but did walk a man in his first inning and gave up the home run. Look at that swing by a 10 year vet against the rookie Snell. If he gets that breaking ball over, they say he can really, you know, have a good game. If it doesn't get over, the left handed batter is absolutely crushing. Another breaking ball, strike two, is Josh Beckett against Wandy Rodriguez of Houston in that ball game down in South Florida. Or rather, I think that game is in Houston, excuse me. Yes. Dontra Willis homered last night. Minute Maid Park as Mabry gets a piece. And Dontrell is at um, 21 wins and tied with Chris Carpenter. Snell looking for his first major league win. 0-3. Mabry to the opposite way. Jason Bay over to get it for the first out. That's what I was saying during the pregame show, Al, that it's not a slam dunk that Carpenter is going to win the Cy Young just yet. I think he is considered by everybody the front runner. But the media darling is Dontrell Willis. He's tied now with Carpenter at 21 wins. I think most people feel that Roger Clemens has fallen off to where he's not in that two horse race with the other guys. But it's not a slam dunk yet that Carpenter is going to win the Cy Young Award. Well, it appears that Dontrell is going to have two unhittable portions of the season beginning and at the end with a little lull right after the All Star break. How much of a factor do you think will be part of the fact that the Cardinals could wrap this thing up as the rain begins to fall here in downtown St. Louis, but Cardinals will wrap this up with a couple of weeks to go and kind of out of the picture of a lot of the national media where Dontra Willis will be having every start leading many of the uh, the highlight shows and it, it's a, a phase in which you look at not only is he hot down the stretch but he's doing it in very very important games. Oh, I think it has a, a big effect and the same thing with Andrew Jones versus Pujols because you know the the Braves are going to win it appears they're going to win their division. Here's Molina out to deep left field a hanging breaking ball and he bangs it out of here. Yadier Molina with a home run. Another thousand dollars raised. The relief fund of Hurricane Katrina. That's two thousand raised here tonight, and it's three to nothing, Cardinals. Looked like Al another pitch that was down on the breaking ball near his shoe tops, and he hits it out of the ballpark. With that home run, FSN Midwest donates another one thousand dollars to the Red Cross. As part of our round trippers for relief, you can now donate as well at home by calling 1 800 Help Now. That's great, up to 9,000 in the total donations this evening. But, you know, Andrew Jones is going to be always facing another you know, contender for the wild card, so he's going to have more dramatic at bats. There's another line shot by Hector Luna, the Cardinals' third hit tonight. Let's go back to the home run by Molina. This one is number eight and RBI number 46. I'm convinced Molina is a low ball hitter. Let's see where this pitch is. It's a breaking ball and it does stay up, but you can see how he goes down. His head riveted on the point of contact. A good full extension and follow through. Is there any doubt he's made himself into a weapon in this lineup? Oh, it's eight home runs now, 46 RBIs. You know, he's not that far from being third right. in RBIs on this ball club. 
That just shows you how diverse this bench has been for the Cardinals and the fact that you take away Edmonds and Pujols. What is it? What does it tell you? It's that, amazing that David Eckstein is his third place with your leadoff man with 53 RBIs. Talked about Mulder last night with no sacrifices this year and Carpenter is swinging away out to right center field and that ball is going to be caught by Wilson and back to first goes Luna two down. Nice play by Craig Wilson as Tyke Redmond the center fielder the man that you would think would take charge cuts in front of him but it was the right fielder that caught it in honor of the final season here at Bush Cardinals fans have the chance to vote for the top 10 greatest Cardinals moments at Bush Stadium presented by MasterCard voting ends on September 19th go to stlcardinals.com and place your votes right now that was a very nice play by Wilson because the center fielder like you said Al Redmond's coming over and you could have a collision out there you give way to your center fielder but and a nice screen but Wilson comes up with the catch. Here's a man you were talking about before David Eckstein out of the leadoff spot with 53 driven in this year. We're talking about the Cy Young the MVP don't overlook the man that's uh, running this ship and that's Tony La Russa. He doesn't get a lot of national uh, coverage. As far as manager of the year it seems like it's a foregone conclusion Bobby Cox is going to win it with 15 rookies in his lineup at different points and times this year but how about the job that the Russ has done this year with just look at like we said the diversity of this bench. Well, I think that we said last year it was Tony's finest season and I think this year it's even better. Well Jackety agrees with that but I would have to give the manager of the year to Bobby Cox. No balls, two strikes. Bounces in the dirt. The job that uh, Bobby Cox does every single year with John Sherholtz replacing good talent with young talent that sticks around for a while. And they've got that uh, Atlanta based group of rookies led by Jeff Francoeur. And that team is exciting to watch. Seems like everybody, though, when you talk about postseason play, overlooks the Braves because they've won just once in this great run. That's a base hit. Luna around second. Heads all the way to third. A two out base hit for David Eckstein, and it brings up Nunez. Good piece of hitting there by the Cardinal leadoff man. And David's just such a professional hitter. He goes with pitches, does a lot of little things. Even though it's two outs, he's still always trying to advance runners inside out stroke, slicing the ball the right side. And you talked about last night about people may not realize Luna's running speed, but there was a good example of it going first to third on that hit to the right uh, to the right side. It's by direction for David Eckstein. Spraying it all around and for the life of me, I can't figure out why Anaheim said goodbye to David Eckstein. As we watch him play day in and day out the guy has won a World Series championship at one of those demanding positions one of the toughest in sports at shortstop and it's my understanding that there were almost a split decision of people in that organization that wanted to keep David others wanted to upgrade but I, in my mind they did not upgrade. The Cardinals upgraded their shortstop position. I think they would tell you that defensively they've gotten better with Cabrera who at last check had just a handful of airs and probably better range in Eckstein and a very good arm but for the complete package of leadership being a winner the fact that he can bat lead off and do so many different things I'm not so sure that's a good trade off for Anaheim. Strike two on Nunez as the rain is picked up. Here comes an 0-2 pitch instead of check on Eckstein over at first base first and third with two outs here in the Cardinals half of the second. I see the rain coming down if Chris Carpenter has a chance to get this game in Tony La Russa would be the first one out there to pull the tarp on. That's an error into right field and it's four to nothing Cardinals. 
Eldred couldn't come up with it. He put the ball in play and good things can happen. Four to nothing St. Louis. Fourth there by young first baseman. And this ball just looked like it's tailor made. Little hop right there, right through the legs. As he keeps the glove down, ball comes up a little bit, but nothing unusual. Not hit particularly hard, and Cardinals catch a break. Now it's four time All Star Jim Edmonds, who is homer tonight. Maybe you don't catch a break because it extends the inning instead of getting Carpenter back out there and trying to get as many innings as possible in before the rains come a little heavier. Do you remember that game where Tony LaRusso was helping out the grounds crew pulling on the tarp when Mark McGuire hit, hit a home run? Hit a home run in 98. Was pulling on the tarp and one of the straps gave way and he almost fell down. But yeah, I remember that one. It's kind of comical. It worked last time, didn't it? The new sure did a wide stance but it's the hands that have a big part to do it pitch inside Edmonds holds up two balls and a strike Another thing with Edmonds is spread out as he is out and you talk about being able to adjust late as the pitch is coming he also can hold up and he's done that three different times tonight against Snell tailing fastball misses in well, that's it the advantage to me with the wide stance is that it keeps you from being out in front on the breaking ball. So he's thrown those breaking balls down and in and he's not fooled by them. And what separates Jim from others is his ability to take that breaking ball the opposite way. Catches the outside corner three and two. Take that fastball. You know a lot of pitchers don't believe it. Pound him in 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 then they think they can sneak one away away and Jim showed you you can't always do that with a two run home run in the first. Runner from first is off with this pitch. That's Nunez, a check swing. They appeal down to third. He did not go around, and the bases will be loaded for Larry Walker. That's a second walk handed out by Ian Snell. With the rain falling, Walker digs in with the bases loaded. Two down here in the second. With the bases loaded, Walker has a pair of grand slams in his Cardinals career, seven overall. Larry struck out swinging his first time up. Josh Fogg is up and throwing in the Pirates bullpen. Recently demoted from the rotation. Here comes an 0-2 pitch. Walker swing and a miss, and he strikes out for the second time tonight. The Cardinals strand, the base is loaded. They add to their lead, and it's 4 to nothing as we head to the third. Five hits in the first two innings, and they lead it by the score of 4 to nothing here in downtown St. Louis with the rain falling. Our Schnooks this day in baseball history. Willie Mays hits his 500th home run back in 1965. Frank Robinson also back in 1971 with home run number 500. Some believe Willie Mays the greatest living ball player. I think Stan the man would give him a run for his money. Frank Robinson of course the first black manager in the history of baseball. And you wonder about when players get to 500 how much does that really mean anymore. Back then it meant a ticket to the Hall of Fame. Curveball misses outside to Snell one and two. In this era of live baseball and home runs, you're absolutely right. There's going to be a test case. At some point, somebody's going to hit 500 home runs and not get entry into the Hall of Fame. 2 2 pitch. A little low. Carpenter, of course, working quickly here tonight. Waste no time. The 3 2 pitch and a swing and a miss. His first strikeout of the night, and that's number 199. Ford Key Magia. As Chris Carpenter, and to me, Al, this is one of the real telling stats because Carpenter does go so deep into games, so it gives you a true idea of just how strong he gets. 
and how consistent he has been. And how strong he stays, but you know, one of the interesting things looking at that, I, I would would have been a little surprised, or I wouldn't have been surprised if the, it would have been a higher number in the first time around. Here's the 0 1 pitch, curveball, back to Carpenter. And Tyke Redmond retired for the second time tonight. He's 0 for 2, and there's two down. Bush Stadium final tours Sunday September 25th it's an expanded super tour they're going to take you all over the ballpark spaces are limited for this uh, Bush Stadium final tour the number to call is 231-6340 231-6340 you'll be up here in the broadcast booth you'll be out on the track you'll be on the field Pirates wasting no time up there hacking against Carpenter is Freddie Sanchez. He grounded the first his first time up. Maybe they want a quick night too. Sure seems that way, doesn't it? Well, the Pirates have really had their problems with the Cardinals. I was talking to some people here at the ballpark prior to the game, and the Buccos have dropped a bunch against St. Louis this year. The Cardinals have won 18 to the last 21 against Pittsburgh an 0 2 mistake by Carpenter and a base hit by Sanchez but why they pitched Albert Pujols last night it just makes you wonder well they wanted to see Albert hit and by the way Albert Pujols at the start of play tonight is leading the league and hitting at 338 along with Derek Lee yeah tied for first how about that and we found out about Redmond broke a finger a couple innings that's why he came out as early as he did also wondered why they didn't have a left-hander. They have two very good left-handed relievers. Why none of those you know, hurdlers were were warming up for Pete McKenna at the uh, towards the end of the ball game, and they had been overworked, so they were trying to give them a day off. 1-0 pitch inside to Jason Bay took part in the home run contest and. The All-Star game in Detroit did not hit one out. Represented Canada. Let's see where he, when he swings, he's got that dip that we've uh, seen before. His back shoulder kind of dips. It's almost an uppercut swing at times. He's had a very solid year. 28 home runs, 82 RBIs. Three and one, just under a 300 average. That's one of the trades that uh, has been a good one for the Pirates in recent memory. Not just handing over players like Aramis Ramirez, but they traded Giles to San Diego and got Perez and Bay. Eckstein goes the easy way. Two second for the force. Cardinals lead it midway through the third, and it's four nothing St. Louis. And on the best damn sports show period on uh, Friday night, behind the scenes look at USC. National champions Matt Leinert, Reggie Bush, Pete Carroll, part of that program. That'll be on Friday night. Nobody's wasting any time getting in the box and swinging away. First pitch, a strike to Reggie Sanders. Good sign. We saw that umbrella come down. And it's still light rain, but uh, it's lesson. Reggie saying that he's treating this like spring training as this one has popped back and foul. Two strikes. Trying to get his timing down. And get ready for the push towards the postseason as very easily could see Reggie to have two or three at bats and then lift it in this game. Like last night when he reached base late in the ball game, they used a pinch runner. Schumacher who scored that time and then got the rally started in the ninth inning as he hit a double and scored the eventual winning run. And Johnny Rocket came through. There's Schumacher who went out to play defense. But it was Johnny Rocket. Which do you prefer, J Rod or Johnny Rod? I prefer John Rodriguez, personally. I'm taking the easy route, Al. Ball third strike on Renji Sanders. And the first out here in the bottom half of the third. He's trying to decide with what comment he said recently to one of my daughters to where I might interpret what I would say to him 
or what I'd call him. <laughs> Chris Alonick, who's getting better. You see him talking, hitting with Al McCray. I can't wait to talk to you during the break. <laughs> no, he's a, he's a gentleman. Chris Alonick had a quarter zone shot in his back a couple of days ago. He was really worried about that over the weekend, how his back was reacting to treatment. And Cardinals are hoping to get him back by the end of the week. Mabry grounds out, second out in this inning. Well, you know how they talk about it takes about 72 hours for those cortisone shots to work, and that's about what it did. You'll never have to say goodbye to Bush Stadium, provided you own the official Bush Stadium commemorative yearbook with more than 300 pages and hundreds upon hundreds of photos. Everything that played at Bush during its 40 years is preserved in this beautiful collection. You don't want to miss it. And the number to call to pick up your yearbook is 345-9303. Again, 345-9303. That's ball one to Molina, who is homered here tonight. Little ground ball taking it short by Sanchez. And the Cardinals, for the first time tonight, go one, two, three. Now McCray, Mark Ritz, and Lonick talking hitting as we go to break. Just saw was provided by Dave Schottenberg. He raced out from the truck last inning with a camera. Went down to Union Station on Market and picked it up. Luna, nifty play. Safe at first. So a little bit of the range of Luna and some of his arm strength. That guy has been on the phone for an hour. Hang up the phone. Enjoy the ball game. Hang it up. Thank you. How about that? You ever see it go right on cue like that? It was unbelievable. On tape. Now, we didn't even have that planned. I'm serious. I just told him to hang it up, and he, he hung it up. The power you possess. You better watch yourself over there. I am. There's a double play ball, 6-4-3. Cardinals have turned 181 double plays. Carpenter's gotten his share as he gets two ground balls for every fly ball. 11 home runs have been hit in Major League Baseball tonight. So $11,000 has been raised and donated by FSN across the country. Two of those in this ballpark. Uh-oh. Maybe three. Edmonds back at the track, at the wall, and it's gone. Ryan Dumit with the home run. And the Pirates are on the board. It's now a 4-1 game. Of course, all the FSN regions across the country are participating during other games tonight and tomorrow. The more home runs, the more donations from FSN to the victims of the hurricane and with that home run FSN Midwest donates one thousand dollars to the Red Cross as part of our round trippers for relief you can also donate the number to call 800 help now 800 help now back to back hits this one by Eldred to mid is batted the man that hit the home run he's batted over 300 in his last 29 ball games. Hit 335, a uh, 345 at Triple A, and there you see a ball in the inner half, just sat there, and he drilled it for his fifth home run. He's a switch hitter. He's got four of the five home runs, batting left-handed. Ground ball left side taken by Nunez. He'll go to second for the force play. Pirates get on the board with a solo shot by Dumit, and it's 4-1. Midwest. The Blues hit the ice this weekend. I saw the drop the puck t-shirt. Very attractive. Two balls and no strikes on Hector Luna. Of course, we'll have the opening night as hockey returns. And uh, we'll open it up against the Detroit Red Wings. Back-to-back -back games with Detroit. You got about two days off. Couple days off, and then we uh, we start the hockey circuit. First game is October 5th. 
And here in St. Louis on the sixth. And we're off and running. Blues just signed Scott Young, so he returns to St. Louis, and it's the first time since 1995 that St. Louis will be without either Al McKinnis or Chris Pronger, so a totally different looking team in many respects without those two. John Kelly returns to St. Louis as our play-by-play -play voice here on FSN and the Hall of Famer, and in many ways the face of the franchise, Bernie Federko, back with us once again. Taken by the second baseman. We'll just call him JJ from here on out. Affleck. The Aplac trivia question. When was the last time the Pirates finished a season with a record above 500? I'm going to give you a hint, Al. I believe the Pirates are, I think they've just wrapped up. They've assured themselves of 13 consecutive losing seasons. That's what I remember. So we'll let somebody else do the math. We'll let them do the math that you and I will just do the game. And you know when you were talking about JJ for Mainsky for, for Mania for Mania when I first saw his name on the on the uh, lineup card in the clubhouse I thought Tony had made a mistake putting Makoviak and then I realized well Makoviak's already playing too as he was just added today but nothing compares for the equipment guys to trying to fit Fritz Alonik on the back of a uniform Makoviak that's child's play for Mania. Well, that's easy right there. Bowling Brook, Illinois product. There it is. See, it fits. Ten letters, that's it. It's this Coast League All-Star this, this year. Birds Alonic with 12. That's a base hit for Carpenter. And his 028 average is on the rise. Third hit and 72 at bats. Affleck. The Affleck trivia question. Last time the Pirates finished above 500. 1992. They were 96 and 66 under Jim Leland. One of those great teams. Pitching of Doug Drabeck and John Smiley and Fonz Bonilla, Van Slyke. They were tough to beat. Back then in the uh, National League East Division. We just made a nightmare for Mark Sauer. Mark Sauer now with the St. Louis Blues, the Blues president, and he was at the helm of the Pirates back then. And unfortunately, he had to start dismantling that team for financial reasons, and it was a tough thing for him to do because, you know, he's a winner, and he's been trying to build a winner right here in St. Louis for the Blues. There's a 1-0 pitch. Eckstein pops it up. Foul territory. Third baseman wants it and has it. That's Makoviak, and there's two outs. You can see why Al the Pirates would be very high on Snell. He's got a live arm. Now he's given up a couple of home runs tonight, but he's good. Struck out five in this very good lineup of the St. Louis Cardinals. He's throwing 94 95 consistently and like you said at times he's possessed that great curveball. Yeah when he when he gets the breaking ball over. You know he, he's a different pitcher. He also has a change up. But it's almost too hard. Strike one to Abraham Nunez on the outside corner. The first baseman. Is Brad Eldred and he's playing behind Chris Carpenter at first. He'll throw the fastball in 93 94 but his, his changeup is in the high 90s. Two strikes on Nunez who reached on an air and by putting the ball in play allowed a run to score. That was Luna that made it four to nothing. Rain is stopped. Here's the 0-2. Inside, 1-2. and two. Edmonds on deck. Home runs tonight by Edmonds and Molina. 11 home runs hit across Major League Baseball tonight. And now we have an update of 13 hits. So $13,000 raised by FSN. Swing and a miss. Another strikeout, number six tonight for Snell. Is any coming up? He'll lead it off when we come back. Party's hot pitch of the game from Snell. As he strikes out Abraham Nunez with his sixth strikeout in this game and another 
Very good curveball. Breaking ball right there. Nunez pulled by it over the top. Not often you see the same amount of hits. Cardinals and Pirates, but a four to one advantage to the Redbirds. That's going to be it for Snell. So it's a pinch hitter as Snell goes four innings and the first pitch is taken for a ball. Nathan McClute. Foul and out of play. A ball and two strikes. Seventy four pitches thrown by Snell. And the one two pitch from Carpenter is pulled foul. Here comes a one two pitch swing and a miss and a strikeout for Carpenter and with that it's number 200 for Chris Carpenter in 2005. Cruz Cardinals since Jose De Leon back in 1989 to amass 200 strikeouts in a season. He came in as number two in the National League in strikeouts. Fastball misses outside to Tyke Redmond. Back to the top of the order here in the fifth. Tied for first with wins. First with innings pitched. Win percentage number one. Little chopper up the middle. Luna backhanded play. Nicely done. That is not an easy play. And Luna a couple of times tonight has really ranged a long way to his right. You have to have good arm strength to do that. Sometimes people just think you can put a weak arm player at second base, but many times you're coming in, you're going out, you're making off balance throws, throws where you have to contort your body and throw back towards first base. And Luna getting a chance to have more playing time is really showing you all of his skills. Two outs and the pitch is taken low by Freddy Sanchez. How could pitchers not watch Carpenter and the pace that he pitches at and say this is what I should be doing. They don't possess his stuff but the pace of the play and how the defense plays behind him. It's a one two three inning once again for Carpenter. And it's 4 1 St. Louis middle of the fifth. Edmonds Walker Sanders coming up. What's on tap is brought to you by Budweiser that aerial shot provided by Dave Sonnenberg. He was busy this afternoon. Tomorrow Cardinals and the Pirates on the WB with Bob Carpenter and Ricky Horton have come your way at one o'clock. Our Budweiser what's on tap. Edmonds takes a ball and the new pitcher in is John Grabo unavailable to pitch in a tight game last night. He comes in in the fifth with the Cardinals on top 4 one. Edmonds is homer tonight. The Cardinals have hit two out. We've had three in this game and of course for every home run hit $1,000 donated by FSN Midwest to the Hurricane Relief Fund. Of course, you can donate by dialing the Red Cross tonight at 1-800-HELP-NOW. And we're up to 14 across Major League Baseball. Philadelphia and uh, Atlanta tied at 4-4. Important game for the wild card is concerned. Florida leading Houston by the score of one to nothing at Minute Maid Park. Again, the Pirate bullpen is finding itself in a game early. The relief pitchers for Pittsburgh have worked a total of 43 and two thirds innings in the club's last nine games. Two balls, two strikes. Edmonds a swing and a miss. Line on Ian Snell. He goes four innings, five hits, four runs, three of those earned. He walked two, he struck out six, and gave up two home runs. A tough night for Walker. He's happy to see Snell out of there. He struck out twice, included in there as a time of the bases loaded. First pitch is low and away for ball one. Yeah, but we talked about how the Pirates have two very good left-handed relievers, so I don't know if it's uh, much of a treat to face Grable. 
The other is Gonzalez as Walker puts it in play. Two short, taken by Sanchez, and there's two outs. And the batter will be Reggie Sanders. Turn to the lineup last night. Chris Carpenter working on his cleats as it's uh, just joining us. It's rained here in St. Louis for a good uh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Not a hard rain, just a drizzle, but cleaning off those uh, spikes. Two outs, nobody on. Reggie is over four in his return to the lineup. And the car. Carpenter 21 game winner and the Bucks are attempting to beat a 20 game winner for the first time since September 22nd of 99. When Richie beat Jose Lima. Here comes the 01. We're talking about Reggie Sanders trying to get his timing back. In his first at bat last night, Barry Bonds, first of the season, hit one off the top of the wall for a ground rule double. Simply amazing. No rehab, and comes back and drills it to the top of the wall. It actually got over the wall. And he also flew out to deep right center field. The Giants still in the thick of things out west. They've got six games remaining with San Diego. The Padres lead their division by five games over the Dodgers, and San Francisco's only six games back. Well, the one thing that San Diego, one game under 500, but the Dodgers and Giants will play the, each other a bunch, too. Sanders reaching for this one, hits it to third. McCobiak across the diamond. And we are through five here in St. Louis. Cardinals on top by the score, four to one. That's a live look at Dave Ricketts. He's going to peel off number seven. Career that uh, started back in 1963 in the major leagues as a player. A guy that has helped out so many throughout the Cardinals system. Actually was a bullpen coach under Whitey Herzog for a number of seasons. And now Chris Carpenter waiting for Dave to peel off the number. So he just continues to warm up. Uh, Dave Ricketts was also a coach when I was with the Cardinals, bullpen coach, and what a great, great guy. I mean, he is just outstanding. He was a coach for the Pirates also. Had a brother reach the big leagues. They were both uh, outstanding, and particularly his brother was an All-American basketball player at Duquesne University. Dave's mother lives in lived in the Pittsburgh area, but uh, what a great guy! And Molina went to tears earlier this year when he saw Dave Ricketts in the clubhouse. He's been that much of an inspiration to so many Cardinal players, and particularly the catchers. Breaking ball and a strike of beauty to make it 0-2 on Jason Bay. Just saw Tim Fernaris out there opening up the uh, wagon gate. As so Taguchi is in this ball game in left field. Tim Fernaris is part of the grounds crew. He has a law degree from St. Louis University and he's still here. And people are saying, well, why do you mention that name, Dan? Well, he was the young man that caught home run number 62 from Mark McGuire. There's Tim. His mother works down in the Cardinals Club, but Tim is a great, great kid. And I guess you kind of like it when you've got a law degree and Still work with your buddies in the ground crew, and what a what a nice young man he is. Here comes a 2-2 pitch, and Bay hits it foul. That's a lawyer that keeps close to his clientele. All the ground crew guys. I think I would have sold the ball, to be honest with you. Those guys are in good shape, man, when it comes to being represented. Just a little low below the knees to Bay. Of course, Tim Fenaris could have sold that ball if he wanted to. Decided to hold on and uh, handed it over to Mr. McGuire. Here comes a 3-2 pitch to Bay. Broken bat. Next time for the first out here in the sixth.
chance for Sotaguchi without number two. And Carpenter is just sailing along. Ball one to Craig Wilson. He is a one for five in the series and 0 for two tonight. Hit into a double play and is fly to right. As Carpenter has been very sharp again, and Wilson calls time trying to break up the rhythm of the Cardinal starter. And the 1 0 pitch. 1 and 1. I'm surprised more teams don't do that against Carpenter. A guy that works very quickly, gets his sign, and here it comes. I'll be there. They're kind of a little bit gun shy to try it because when we talk about the mean streak Carpenter has, he might take exception to it and run one in on him. Here comes a 2 1 pitch. Looped out to right field. It's going to drop for a hit. Two out base hit. Drops in front of Walker. Craig Wilson has a 321 career average with six home runs lifetime here at Bush Stadium. and. I think because of the big swing and the big guy that he is that might have fooled Walker a little bit thinking that ball was going to travel further. But it just didn't sound good coming off the bat. Craig got a haircut. Al got a haircut. See he lost his strength. Here's Dumit. And it's ball one on a curveball up and away. Dumit is two for two with a homer and a single. A couple hard hit balls. 1 0 pitch. Kind of looks like he's got the built of Jason Kendall, former Pirate catcher, and sent to Oakland. Danny Heron won again the other night. It's 13 wins, I believe. You know, at 3 9. Houston is tied up their game 1 1, and now Florida has uh, regained the lead. It's 2 1. Philadelphia's got a battle with Atlanta that's 5 4 after 7. The Phillies leading. Sing single and then a home run off a of Carpenter, and I think this time he's paying a little more attention to commit. Another hard hit ball. That's a fair ball. That's all the way into the right field corner. Wilson being waved in. Luna will relay to the plate. And a good relay. They held up the runner. As Walker had to be careful how to play that. He wasn't sure if it was going to hit off the indention on that side wall. The Southwest Airlines sign. It went all the way down into the right field corner. And quickly got it back in. And the strong arm there of Hector Luna. And he threw a strike to the plate. And really inside the bag. So Mabry didn't have a chance. You see Craig Wilson lumbering around. He's given the go ahead at third, but then at the last second, John Russell holds him up. Luna gets the relay throw and no hesitation, a strong throw of the plate, accurate, perfect bounce right there. And by that time, when they saw Walker come up with it, Russell held Wilson around third base, made him come down the line far enough. But when they saw that the relay was going to be made, they held him up. I thought he was going to score. And Ty Wigginton can tell you that you don't want to run into Molina. Strong throw there by Luna. And it's runners at second and third. And Brad Eldred, the hitter, he's four for five in this series. And tonight he is walking single. He's set up on the outside portion of the plate. And it's one ball, one strike. Big, strong. Young man, as I said, started the season at double A, worked way up to triple A, and now is doing a nice job. And he's big and strong. He put one in his wheelhouse and he can lose it. Pirates again tonight have out hit the Cardinals 7-5, but trail 4-1. That was the story in last night's ball game, the fact that they had situations like this but couldn't bring those runners in. And I, and I think that's the experience of Mulder and tonight Carpenter that 
you've got veteran guys out there that maybe they don't have their best stuff, but they know how to get outs when they need them. Here's a one-two pitch. Two and two. We're in the sixth. And the Cardinals lead it four to one. A count of two balls, two strikes. Runners at second and third for Brad Eldred. Like didn't want the cutter. Maybe didn't want the curveball. Maybe it's back to the cutter. He got him. Strikeout number 201 this season for Carpenter. Top right of telecast is presented by authority of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of the game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the St. Louis Cardinals LLC. Cardinals a lead of 4-1 to one here in the bottom of the sixth at Bush Stadium in downtown St. Louis. Albert Bosky, Dan McLaughlin with you and our Bud Sports crew. John Mabry will lead it off against Graybo in his second inning of work in relief of Ian Snell. We've had three home runs tonight, so that means FSN Midwest will donate $3,000. We're hoping to add to it as Mabry takes a ball upstairs. Magic number could be down to two after tonight. Cardinals could have a situation where they'd have to wait and see what would happen with Houston tomorrow night, but going into that series with Chicago, they could have it all wrapped up. If not, it could be a celebration at Wrigley Field. One and two the count. John looked lost on that delivery from the left-hander. Graybo, 26 years of age, third round selection in the 97 June draft. Like you said, they have two very good left-handers in their bullpen, this being one of the two. Along with Mike Gonzalez, who is a different-looking lefty, and the fact that uh, you see Graybo will get it up there into low 90s, but uh, Gonzalez, a guy that will get it up there 93, 94 miles an hour. Three and two the count. Molina on deck, and then we'll see Hector Luna. John Mabry with one of the most dramatic home runs this season. That was against Cincinnati in the greatest comeback in franchise history. Ninth inning comeback off of Danny Graves in Cincinnati. Graves now with New York. And that's just part of the story of this bench this season for the Cardinals. Another foul ball. Bravo has allowed just nine hits in his last 17 appearances, covering 55 at bats. Here's a 3 2 pitch, and it's popped up. Foul territory taken by the third baseman. And McCobiak puts away out number one here in the bottom of the sixth. Molina one for two tonight with a home run. He's also grounded out to short. Sides so are going to make a pitching change as Molina comes in here. I wasn't looking, paying attention who was warming up. So Grable retired all four men he faced. You got Edmonds, Walker, Sanders, and Mabry. So three of the four lefties there. And Molina will face a new pitcher when we come back. Back to Bush Stadium. Cardinals leading four to one. We're in the bottom of the sixth inning, there's one out, and Brian Meadows will take over. His third most appearances on the staff with his 60th appearance here. He's struggled of late as he's been scored upon in four of his last five appearances. A veteran. Been around for numerous years right now, and he'll inherit a one out, nobody on situation. And facing Molina, who is homer tonight and grounded out to short. 
Here's Yadier Molina against Brian Meadows. 4-1 St. Louis. One out here in the bottom of the sixth. After this bat, we're going to show you something we hope will take place later on in the postseason right here at Bush Stadium. It happened in the second year of this Bush Stadium. 1967. Yeah. Boy, that was a magical year. Cardinals were king of the world after beating the Red Sox. Here's a 1-1 pitch. And Molina shoots it down the right field line. It's slicing out of play. I know Tony La Russa feels the pressure, a good pressure to get back to the fall classic and this time win it. The window of opportunity is very short, but yet this team is getting into postseason after postseason since 2000. Here's a 1-2 pitch to Molina. Here's a 2-2. Molina sharply hit to short. So here we go. We're going to take you back to 1967. And the Cardinals wrapping up a World Series championship. Red Shandies, of course, the manager. But you see we've highlighted Tim McCarver. And watch the fan. The fan is saying, hey, give me that. Come on, Jim, you don't need it any longer. <laughs> you know, back in 1982, it was Daryl Porter and his mask that he threw off. And I think it wound up in the seats. I remember one of the highlights uh, one year where one of the umpires was coming off the field and trying to take uh, one of the players' hats. I think he got away with it, too. Check swing by Luna, and he went around. Those were the days before they bring out the uh, mounted patrol. How yeah, about when Hank Aaron hits his historic home run and he's trotting around the bases with fans? A couple fans chasing him, or how about Chris Shambliss? There's another one. Hitting the home run in Yankee Stadium. 77. Walk off home run and then had to battle about 500 people. A little different for Aaron Boone. Security had been uh, upgraded a couple years ago. Here's a 2 1 pitch. Chop towards third. Luna will be retired. Speedy down that first baseline. We played six, and St. Louis leads it by the score of 4 to 1. Talented uh, Kim Eberly of our Fox Sports Net crew is with us, and we celebrate the return of Blues hockey. FSM Midwest invites fans to join the excitement at the Blues' first full practice this Saturday. And the first 500 fans, Duck Al, I'm trying, Duck. I'm trying. You still have the <laughs> neck brace on or what's going on? Get out of the way, will you? The first 500 fans will get a drop the puck t-shirt that Kim has uh, so kindly been able to uh, model for us up here in the booth. That one is uh, hit to Edmonds and he's got it. No, he doesn't. He dropped it. And advancing to second, Mr. Maniak. Edmonds almost got it. But again, if you come down uh, this Saturday to the Blues practice, it's the Drop the Puck t-shirt. And we've got uh, 500 of those t-shirts that will be given away in Hazelwood on Saturday as the Blues open up their training camp. Another great effort here by Edmonds. He almost got it. Oh, you see it just right out the webbing and just flipped out right there. They almost had a shot at for Maniac, who gets his first major league hit, an extra base hit, and almost another highlight reel for the Edmonds show. And now it's Ty Wigginson. Almost looked like a ball that uh, maybe Sotoguchi could have gotten to instead of Edmonds. Yeah, it, it actually looked like it was going to or probably was an easier play for the left fielder Taguchi. 
And there's a base hit out to center. They're going to test Edmonds. Yes, they will. Here it comes to the plate. It's cut off by Mabry. And it's now a 4-2 Cardinals lead. RBI by Ty Wigginton. He's had a good series. He's four for five now. And even though you got Carpenter on the mound, this game is getting a little closer than what the Cardinals would like. Almost got uh, caught by uh, Luna, then the strong throw by Edmonds, just slightly a little bit offline, and so Mabry decided to cut it off and keep Wigginton at first base. Don't allow him to get into scoring position. And we're back to the top of the order in Tyke Redmond. Let's see if all of a sudden Carpenter can restore order. Nine hits by the Pirates now. That's strike two. Redmond tonight 0 for 3. He is grounded back to Carpenter. He's grounded to first and grounded out to second. Cardinals have turned a double play tonight. Be difficult. Hanging ball pulled foul by Redmond. By the way, 15 home runs hitting Major League Baseball tonight, so $15,000 raised. It's on top of the one million donated by our parent company. New score. That's hit out to right. Walker is there. That's the first out, and let's go pitch by pitch, and this is brought to you by your Mid-America Chevrolet dealers. Carpenter to Redmond. He went after him with a fastball, 93 miles an hour, then he repeats it, 91 to change the speed. There's a little bit of that cutter coming in on him, and then the same thing right there. Got it up, got it out over the plate a little bit, but a line drive into the glove of Walker. Now it's Freddy Sanchez, and a check on the runner at first. Ty Wigginton has made this a 4-2 Cardinals lead. We'll keep an eye on the pitch count. Cardinals have said that they'd like to keep Carpenter around 100 in each of his starts from here on out. And if anything, on the low side of the century mark. Pirates have a right-hander getting loose. 88 total pitches by Chris Carpenter. He's due to lead things off for the Cardinals in their half of the seventh. Pitch out, and it's 2-0. You know, there's only that is a fatal mistake to try and steal off a of Carpenter and Molina. You are not going to be successful. Taking a steal there, maybe a hit and run. That's a liner over Luna again out to right field. Now 10 hits for the Pirates against Carpenter tonight. They've out hit the Cardinals 10 5 and Chris Carpenter in a bit of trouble here leading by two runs 4 2 and activity in the bullpen. Well they, you know they just maybe the intensity of facing a last place club a club that you have dominated against not only the team wise but also pitching wise. But Carpenter still has the ability to keep the opposition from scoring. Remember I was talking about uh, you don't steal off of Molina and Carpenter. There have been four attempts this year. Three have been caught. The only guy that stole off him is Derek Lowe. Derek Lowe, the, the pitcher for the Dodgers, and that was an uncontested steal. Tyler Johnson, lefty, and along Al with Al Reyes. Carpenter could use a double play here. That's a base hit out to left, and so Taguchi will come up gunning to the plate. They wave in Ty Wigginton. He scores, and it's now a 4-3 Cardinals lead. Mm. And it's four hits in the inning against Carpenter. They're going to get loose in a hurry. Well, like last night, Jason Bay comes up in his fourth appearance our plate appearance and gets his first hit of the night so the Gucci 
It really wasn't hit that hard, so it didn't get to Taguchi and the throw a little bit offline. Could have had another collision between those two. And now it's Rob McCobiak with one out. Runners at first and second. Base hit could tie it up. Extra base hit could put the Pirates on top. That may have been ordered from the bench. From the bench to Molina, then to Carpenter to allow the bullpen to get loose. So lefty is up and throwing again. That's Tyler Johnson. Can't really think of a time during this 13 game winning streak that Carpenter has given up four hits in an inning. There's been a large percentage of the time. The only way you could score against him is, is if you hit a solo home run. This is an order from the bench not to throw another pitch. Not time so called by Eckstein, and that see, seems to be that's going to be it for Carpenter. Yeah, he's not happy about it either because they're going to sit there and they're going to keep on trying to stall, let the bullpen have time, but Carpenter's one of that type of competitor that he doesn't like this. I think he's the he, kind of guy that says, I created the jam, I want to get out of it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And because they let it go to this point, Carpenter could be sitting in the dugout and find his losing streak. He has nothing to say about it. He'll go to the bullpen and bring in somebody else. And that could determine whether he wins for the 14th time or loses for the first time. First time in 14. See, they want time out. They do not want him to throw a pitch. And they're getting a little upset that the bullpen isn't ready. And right now you have to say Tyler Johnson. So with runners at uh, first and second. What handed bat at the plate looks like the Cardinals will go to Tyler Johnson. And it's up to the bullpen to preserve this lead and try to get Carpenter victory number 22. Another nice round of applause from the home folks. Get in game alerts, scores, breaking news, and more on your mobile phone for $3.99 a month. Text the word cards to 65246 or MLBGO, and charges will appear on your mobile phone bill. So Carpenter can only watch now as Tyler Johnson comes into this ballgame. Carpenter gives up 11 hits, and those two runners out there are still his responsibility. Johnson has appeared in a couple of games so far, does have a strikeout. He made his major league debut with that one inning to work. And, and now the Pirates now are going to counter with, it uh, looks like, Jack Wilson. Jack Wilson, their everyday shortstop, who's been, came out as a late scratch yesterday with a sore back. But Tyler Last night it was Kip Wells. Yeah. Pinch hitting. And that's one of the reasons why they went out and made another roster move. So just wasn't Carpenter's night when you think of 11 hits. Tyler Johnson last time out, you know, he faced one batter and he reached base. He's got a good live arm. And a 1-0 pitch to Jack Wilson. Lifted down the right field line and out of play. Cardinals felt a sense of relief of being able to get Tyler Johnson back in the organization. Yeah, he was selected by Oakland in the Rule 5 draft. Went to spring training with them, but they returned him back to St. Louis. The Cardinals were happy to reacquire him. Here's a 1 1 pitch. It comes into a tight ball game with the Cardinals trying to hold on. Leading by a run. Tyler was selected in 34th round of the 2000 draft. Made his debut in 2001 with the rookie league Johnson City. This year he had 77 strikeouts, second most in the Pacific Coast League among, among pitchers without any starts. 1 2 pitch and Wilson fights it off little bloop into right may drop Luna running for it won't get it Walker can't come up with it and this game is tied. Mm. So base hit RBI for Jack Wilson game is tied up at four.
That run is charged to Carpenter. That looks like a hanging breaking ball, but just high enough that all he could do is just pop it up and just well placed. Then Walker had trouble picking it up, and that allowed the runner to score and tie it at four all. That's going to be it for Johnson. Cardinals again will go to their bullpen. So it's a brand new game now. It's 4-4. That's the 12th hit for Pittsburgh. One out. Runners at first and second. Tell you about the changes when we come back. Coming up, it's the Midwest Sports Report following our ball game here at Bush Stadium. And on tonight's program, player interviews with Jim Hayes. You can call into the program and have a chance to visit with the one and only Brent Stover. And previews of Mizzou and Illinois this weekend. All coming up on... MSR. So Johnson came in, gave up the base hit, and now a key component in this bullpen for postseason play is Al Reyes. He comes in with opponents only hitting 180 against him, and uh, he'd love to get a ground ball and a double play in this spot as Craig Wilson will be the hitter. 180 average is fourth best as Carpenter will not get his 22nd win tonight. He's a strikeout pitcher, and he usually keeps inherited runners from scoring. And Wilson pulls it foul. Greg Wilson, a guy that came up as a catcher and was part of the uh, Toronto Blue Jays organization originally. And they were very patient with him. Became a terrific power hitting pinch hitter. And a lot of the Pirate fans wanted to see more of him, but they felt he was not ready for full-time duty, and now he is. The 0-1 pitch. Swing and a miss as he just got a piece for strike two. Al Reyes is 15th in the National League in inherited runners allowed to score. Only 11 out of 41. Got 42 strikeouts in the last 40 games and 57 in his 55 innings of work. And only 16 walks. Florida leads Houston by the score of 2-1. to one. That ball game in the bottom of the fifth. And an 0-2 pitch from Reyes. Wilson pops it back and foul and out of play. He got a pitch to hit there and couldn't do anything with it. 40,599 tonight's official attendance. So another crowd that's over 40. Philadelphia has posted a victory over Atlanta. 5-4. So that bodes well for them in the wild card race. They started a game out tonight. 0-2 pitch to Wilson. Trying to get in a reach on an outside breaking ball. And it's 1-2. and two. Afternoon baseball tomorrow. Jason Marquis and Oliver Perez, our next Fox telecast, will be on Thursday night. Jeff Supon against Mark Pryor. Cardinals are going to see Pryor, Rush, Maddox, and Zambrano in that four-game set. The 1-2 pitch. 2-2. Two and two. St. Louis will send out Supon, Morris, Mulder, and Carpenter. So Carpenter, his next opportunity at number 22, will be against uh, Carlos Zimbrano on Sunday. Good matchup. Here comes a 2-2 delivery outside. Good block there by Molina. Dave Ricketts would be proud of Molina with that one. Big pitch in this ball game coming up. With a count of three and two. Long look by Reyes. Now time is called. Full count delivery. Here it comes. And it's ball four. So Reyes comes into the ball game and promptly walks Craig Wilson to load him up. 
now it's Ryan Dumit. Runner at third base is Carpenter's final base runner. And Dumit has had a big night. A single, a home run, and a double. We have had three home runs in this game, so $3,000 donated by FSN Midwest tonight to the Relief Fund and the Red Cross. What would they pay for a cycle? One out, bases loaded. Strike one. 17 home runs have been hit in the FSN games being broadcasted tonight. Reyes a long look in the 0-1. Good pitch on a changeup way out in front, nothing in two. Fastball on the first pitch, changeup on second. Reyes has got a very good changeup, he's got good arm action. Wilson wouldn't go for it, but here, Dumit swings over the top. The 0-2, and Dumit just got a piece on another changeup. 81 miles an hour on that changeup. Last cycle was back in uh, 2004 for the Pirates. Darrell Ward against St. Louis. Jason Kendall had hit one against the Cardinals at their old ballpark well, back in 98, I believe, or 99. Admit, well, he lacks a triple, but I'm not trying to uh, help him out at all. A changeup would have got him if it would have been away. Another 0-2 pitch. This one is popped up. Eckstein calling for it. Now the infield fly is signaled. And there's two outs. So a big pitch right there for Reyes through the fastball. And after a couple change-ups, it was 90 miles an hour. But Mitt probably looked like it was about 95. Set up outside. Let's see if he hits a spot. Really kind of back towards the middle. But fooled the hitter, got underneath it, and popped it up. You can see that Field and Colbreth, our second base umpire, had to wait to see exactly where that was going to drop. He did not call for the infield fly until the last second. But I didn't realize why he didn't. Why didn't he call it when he was on the edge of the outfield grass? Exactly. Doesn't have to be on the infield. As long as the infielder can catch it, and without a, re, you know, without an extraordinary effort. Here's Brad Eldred. Eldred out to right center field. Walker's got it. And it's time to stretch here in St. Louis and Bush Stadium. Pirates tie it up. It's 4-4. Four, four. Bottom of the seventh coming up. Tonight is tonight's merchandise winner in the Hyundai Long Drive inning sweepstakes of the Cardinals hit a home run in the seventh. David qualifies for the Hyundai Tucson drawing in September. To register, visit a St. Louis area Hyundai dealer. Chris Duncan will be the pinch hitter against Josh Fogg. Who comes into this ball game? A brand new game here in the bottom of the seventh. Chris Carpenter cannot pick up the victory. Will not take what could be a possible loss for the Cardinals, but he would not take it. Josh Fogg, a record of six and ten, just bumped from their rotation, working out of the bullpen, and he'll face Duncan first off. He's in the ninth spot in the order, and then the top of the order for St. Louis. Yeah, this is the first relief appearance for Josh Fogg after 28 starts, and Chris Duncan. Still searching for his first major league hit. Been fun to kind of watch him. We remember when he was still in high school, taking some batting practice under the direction of Mark McGuire. I remember that. Big, strong kid. Selected in the supplemental round between the first and second rounds of the 99 draft as compensation for the Orioles signing Delano DeShields. That at 264. Team high 21 home runs and 73 driven in at Memphis. Played in a team high 128 games. And if you're Chris Duncan, you've got to think about finding a different position with Mr. Pujols at first. So he played uh, 19 games in the outfield. I think in some ways, I get the impression talking to his mother that you know they'd almost like him out of the organization. He swings and misses and strikes out on three pitches. A 
Major League Baseball on Fox. Fox Saturday Baseball this weekend. Cardinals at the Cubs. It'll come your way at noon on KTBI. Mulder against Maddox. This weekend on Fox Saturday Baseball. Cardinals and the Cubs. Uh, said that uh, Chris Duncan, you know, it's, it's almost like you always feel like there's nepotism and you're only here because of your your father but that's not the case and sometimes it's much much tougher for a player to be in the same organization where his father's a manager or a coach it's got to be tough for Dave Duncan to watch when his son comes to the plate because he's a dad first of all he's pulling so hard for his son to get that base hit yeah you know he's never he hadn't had many opportunities to see him but right. one of the things he does do is follow the Chris and his older brother Shelley was in the Yankee organization and I think he had 35 home runs this year at double A but follow him on the internet but you know it's like anybody else I mean they're very proud of your kids but you can't be can't show it you can't do this you can't do that you, and it's tough for the kids too. Two balls two strikes on David Eckstein he's two for six in this series one for two tonight. Saw his hit streak stopped at 14 games over the weekend. Hits it sharply to second, and there's two outs. Tony the Russo and the Cardinals. The fact is, they're just trying to stay healthy down the stretch and get guys back in this lineup, whether it be Reggie Sanders or Larry Walker, ready to play every day for the postseason. And there's no real recipe on how to do that, but because you got to play hard and with intensity. Or injuries do come, but you get proper rest. But different ways to look at it. Every time you play a game, there's the possibility and potential to get somebody hurt. But yet, if you don't play them, you know they aren't going to be of value to you. Abraham Nunez is, for the most part, turned into an everyday player. So they're trying to find some spots where he could rest, and one of those could be this weekend when Mark Rizalonic returns. To the lineup, but Tony LaRusso is telling me that the thing that he asks of his players is to be honest. If they're sore, he'll sit them. If they're tired, he'll sit them. But if you don't come to him and tell him that, and you're in the lineup, he expects the players to play it as if it's the final time you're ever going to step on that field. Nothing into the count on Abraham Nunez. And the good thing for Tony is his team has bought into his philosophies, his, you know, you make sacrifices for the betterment of the team. Abraham Nunez out to right and it's caught. Cardinals go one two three eighth inning coming up here in St. Louis and it's four four between Pittsburgh and the Cardinals. Cardinal baseball a production of Bud Sports and an exclusive presentation of FSN Midwest. Glad you're with us here at Bush Stadium Cardinals Pirates four four. Dan McLaughlin, Al Rabosky with you, and our Bud Sports crew. It's been a while, Al, since we've seen young right-hander Brad Thompson. Well, it was a week ago tonight that he faced the Cubs. And two-thirds, two hits allowed, two strikeouts. He's done an outstanding job since being purchased from Memphis on May the 6th. He's the first player from the Cards 2002 draft to make the Major League debut. And the first pitch to J.J. Fermaniak, the second baseman of the Pirates, is a strike on a swing and a miss. Thing about Thompson, no matter how much time off, he usually throws strikes. When you think about down the road and potential of the starting rotation beyond the season, beyond next year even, Brad Thompson name his name comes up, but Thompson is the first to tell you he loves it now in the bullpen. Misplayed there by Nunez. And the Pirates second baseman reaches. So the leadoff man is on. And you don't like the way that this one is turned around here in these late innings. Um, Nunez has played outstanding baseball. But in my mind, you play that off to the side. You run the risk of that happening. You square up. You had enough time to square up to that ball and play it. So if it takes a tricky hop, it goes off his chest. They have not ruled on that. But that's an error all the way. Or have they? They didn't give a hit on that, did they? Now they've given an error. 
Josh. Josh Fogg will hit for himself, and so he'll be asked to advance the runner from first to second. He'll square. Right, tie game late. It's tough to make an error on the first uh, first batter, give him a free pass. Remember, this is a former starter. This is his first relief appearance, so in this uh, situation, sacrificing, he should be better off than any other reliever. And he gets the bunt down. Only play for Molina is to go to first and quickly three players, Nunez, Eckstein, and Thompson all converge on the back hit third. Well, yeah, but even as they converge, three guys go to third base. Taguchi sees that, and he races to second. So watch after the bunt's being played. Now, you're going to see Eckstein go here. You're going to see Nunez come here. And it was Thompson. All go to third in case this runner here wants to try to go around second and go to third base. What you don't see later on is the left fielder Taguchi goes to second as the three guys are going to be over at third base. Base hit could put the Pirates on top for the first time tonight. Chris Carpenter tonight. Six and a third, 11 hits, four runs all earned. He walked a man, he struck out three and gave up a home run. That was to Ryan DeMitt. Back in the fourth. Redmond is batting in that uh, leadoff spot that was occupied for the better part of the season by Matt Lawton. He was then traded to Chicago. Only a brief period. He was then off to the Yankees for their stretch run. All right, second base. Looks like Molina is going to make sure that Thompson remembers that you. There's a sign for when no one's on base, and there's also a sign when, or a sequence of signs, you you know you change it with a man at second base. After what we saw Ray King do last night, don't take anything for granted. There's a ground ball right side taken by Luna to Mabry, and there's two out. Tank Redman is 0 for 5 tonight. And it's up to Freddie Sanchez. Sanchez three for nine in the series, two for four tonight. It's all been to a nice little player. Started 51 games at third base, 26 at second base, and tonight is his sixth game at shortstop. And with Castillo was injured for the season after he was taken out on a double play by Hector Luna. He's hit better than 280 in his 83 starts. Three for nine in this series, two for four in this game. Chance for the Pirates in their first lead tonight. It's just missed outside. Two balls and no strikes. Three home runs in this game. Extra meeting tonight as we donate to the victims of Hurricane Katrina. The relief fund. A grounder for Eckstein. Deep in the hole. Long throw in the dirt. It is picked and out. Mabry held on at first. That saves the go-ahead run from crossing the plate. Bottom of the eighth coming up. We're all tied up at 4-4. Game recap is brought to you by Bank of America, the official bank of baseball. Edmonds got things going early on with a two-run homer. That meant money for the relief victims. As we have donated $1,000 for every home run hit tonight. Three of them have been hit tonight. FSN Midwest proud to donate that money. And FSN across the board in Major League Baseball donating money tonight. Dave Ricketts pulls down number seven. Carpenter seven and a third, a no decision. So he gave up 11 hits. That round of applause means one thing. Mr. Pujols is pinch hitting. And he'll go against a hard-throwing lefty in Mike Gonzalez. Um, National League leader with Derek Lee in batting average. Pujols hitting 338 at the start of play. 39 home runs. RBIs at 108. Flash bulbs popping in this ballpark. We know a lot of fans coming to Bush Stadium for the final time, bringing their cameras and 
Why not take a shot of the potential MVP in 2005? The numbers on Gonzalez. 43 games, 0-3 on the season. The 2-0 pitch. That very, very good stuff. He had a sprain of the MCL and put him on the disabled list, so he's only making his 44th appearance tonight. Chance of MVP in the 2-1. Two, 2-2 two two on Albert. He delivered with a pinch hit RBI base hit last night. A great short-lived lead for the Cardinals. This is the flash bulbs popping in this ballpark. And that last one, I think, they got in Albert's eyes. He was fooled by the off-speed pitch. It only needs one. And the count is two and two. Gonzalez set. Here it comes. Good location of that fastball up and in. And tying up a hitter. I guess. Yeah, I mean, he's, he can get it up there in the mid-90s and got a little movement to it. Kind of jumps at you a little bit, so you got that body going in there. We were talking last night how good both Graybo and Gonzalez are. There's a breaking ball there. You can't, you got to respect the fastball, so you can't be looking for that. And Seabull will pinch it here for Walker. Graybo in an inning and a third. Perfect baseball, and now it's quickly nothing and two. Scott Siebel with one of the biggest home runs of the year was against the Yankees earlier this season. By the way, Boston lost tonight, and the Yankees will win. I feel very comfortable that they will win against their nemesis, Tampa Bay. And the Yankees started play just uh, three and a half games out. Do you see why I feel very comfortable that they will win tonight? Well, it is a pretty secure lead of. 14 runs. 17 to 3. Playing in the eighth inning. Taguchi's first plate appearance. Two balls, no strikes. Two outs, nobody on. 4-4 here in the bottom of the eighth. So 301 average against left-handers with four of his seven home runs. Last time Taguchi Homer was back on August 3rd against Ron Ballone in the Florida Marlins. Congratulations to the Florida State League champions, our own Cardinal eight ball affiliate. Two and two on Sotoguchi. Beat Lakeland in the best of five tonight. Cardinals. Two balls, two strikes on Sotoguchi. It's almost from that school of charging line drives. <laughs> I mean, you just don't see people do that anymore. Everyone tries to have that pitcher perfect all through. Good job by uh, Gonzalez. He strikes out the side and included Albert Pujols, Scott Siebel, and that one of Sotoguchi. It's 4-4. Rad Thompson in his second inning of work. It's 4-4, top of the ninth. Good work by Mike Gonzalez of the Pittsburgh Pirates. A 1 2 3 inning as he struck out the side. Cardinals twice tonight have struck out 1 2 3 in this uh, ball game. A couple of innings. Scott Siebel stays in the game. He'll play first base. And there's Skip Schumacher. He's out in left field. 
So Taguchi moves from left to center. And Mabry goes to right from first to right. Walker out of the game. Florida State League Championship, as you mentioned, three games to two. That's the first Cardinal affiliate Florida State League since the mid-80s to win a championship. 86. Cardinals have that long time relationship with St. Petersburg. And now it's over in called West Palm, or it's called Palm Beach Cardinals, but they're playing at the Jupiter Spring Training site. And Pop Warner is the skipper there. Good for him. Thompson, quick, quick work of Bay, and let's uh, check in with Brent Stover as a look at the Midwest Sports Report. Coming up tonight after the game on the Bushlight Midwest Sports Report, complete postgame coverage, including Tony LaRusso's postgame comments, plus your phone calls at 1 888 Ring Fox. That and more after the game. But now back to Dana now. Little chopper up the middle, and that's a base hit. For Jack Wilson, he's one for two tonight. Check that, he's two for two tonight. Delivered at uh, base hit, blue pit into right field, and picked up an RBI. So the go ahead run is on at first base. See where this location is. All up. Starting to run back towards the inside part of the plate, but didn't get there. From Jack Wilson to Craig Wilson. One out. Anthony Reyes is warming up in the Cardinals bullpen. And if you're wondering about Anthony Reyes making a start, this could be a double play. Six, four, three double play. We'll tell you about Anthony Reyes when we come back to the bottom of the ninth. Here in St. Louis, a chance to win it. Our score is at 4-4 as we move to the bottom of the ninth here in St. Louis. And our play of the game is brought to you by Bud Light. Great taste for your great times. And it's this play by David Eckstein that saves a run on a good scoop by John Mabry. That was in the eighth. That's your Bud Light play of the game. John Gall will be the hitter to start things off for the Cardinals against Gonzalez, who struck out the side. He struck out Pujol, Siebel, and Sotoguchi back in the eighth. So Gall, the pinch hitter for Mabry. This is a good opportunity for John Gall to show something. As you said, Gonzalez, and now they may do a double switch. So I think that's a plus getting uh, Gonzalez out of this ball game, no matter what happens with John Gall's at bat. Restovich will go in to the outfield, looks like right field. And Rick White will come in, the former Cardinal and former everything else. 4-4 four, four here in the bottom of the ninth as we step aside. White, he's going to take over for the Pittsburgh Pirates. And uh, White was... Now kind of the, the center of the controversy of that brawl that these two teams had. It was Dave Duncan going over to talk to his former pitcher, Rick White, who was with the Cardinals a couple of seasons ago. And that's when the Pirates took exception to what Dave and, and the Cardinals were doing. Yeah, and I talked to Rick about it, and he felt that, he, he felt that, and I don't know why, because they had a good relationship, and he felt that it, it wasn't something that, Dave Duncan should have asked him and it, as he freely admitted if Tony La Russa would have asked me I would have answered it and I think the, either way he could have answered and said no it wasn't intentional or it was intentional and but it was just part of the game to pitch up and into Luna after the rough slide that took out their you know outstanding little second baseman Castillo Castillo and knocked him out you know on a hard slide but then uh, McClendon, he objected to a coach speaking to one of his players, and that's how that escalated. And you know, John Gall rips it to short. The play is made by Jack Wilson. Jumping Jack Wilson out there. Unfortunately, that name applies right now. <laughs> Jumping Jack. As he skies and at the apex of his jump he hauls down this line drive so looked like a good start for the Cardinals 
and a nice play by Jack Wilson, the former Cardinal minor leaguer. Was about to say something about Anthony Reyes before we got that double play. Tony La Russa said it's going to be tough to get him a start in the final couple of uh, weeks of this regular season as this will be two outs off the bat of Molina. But going back to what you were talking about with Rick White, I mean, how many times, though, do we see opposing teams and the players converging before games and visiting? I mean, it's a little different story here in 2005 as opposed to what I'm sure that you dealt with prior to games during batting practice. Well, it's, it's still a rule. Of, you know, there is no fraternization. And they used to have an umpire that'd sit in there and made sure you were fine if you talked to the other team. And you could, in passing, say hello, but you couldn't have conversations. And Luna fouls this ball off his foot. And I've asked umpires, and they said, well, it's still in effect, but, you know, nobody's going to, nobody pays attention to it anymore. Barry Weinberg getting his air time. Right off the right on the toe is the shin guard didn't do anything. It's like Monday night football uh, last night. The official was on the field, and I believe they have to be on the field something like 45 minutes prior to game time, and then you had two players getting ejected for the fight prior to Monday night football, but football and baseball a little different. No balls and a strike on Hector Luna. Hector, if you hit it a long way, you can trot. You can limp. You can drag it. Al will be down there to help you out. And you can end the game. Of course, Rick White going right back in the spot to where if he fouled it, looks like he would foul it off his uh, ankle or his foot. And throw that power sinker right back inside. Hopefully you get it again. Mm. 2-1 pitch. A chopper up the middle, and it's a base hit. And last night's hero will come to the plate. Luna's limping out there, and John Rodriguez. They have two lefties in that bullpen, and they've used them. John was the uh, hero last night with this game when he hit off of Solomon Torres. That won the ball game as that scored Skip Schumacher had double to start the inning. He could be a hero again tonight with two down. 4-4, four, four, bottom of the ninth. And you just knew there was no chance that he was not going to come through last night. Rodriguez, those eight years in the minor leagues, eight plus years, is dreaming about getting to the big leagues. And he's got a three game hitting streak in a tough way, three for six, with a couple of them being pinch hitting currents. Big lead, and there goes Luna. A throw down to second. He's in there safely. That's a big stolen base right there. Luna's eight steal and nine attempts. And a base hit could win it now by Rodriguez. That pitch was a ball. Definitely stole that base off of Rick White. He's very slow to the plate. You see the lead leg get in there well ahead of the, the tag. And Rick White, you know, he's slow, deliberate. He has that leg kick where he tucks it back behind. And that you steal off the pitcher. Now they're going to intentionally pass Rodriguez. And that might be uh, doing the Cardinals a favor. David Eckstein with runners in scoring position. This season is hitting 351. So the intentional pass to John Rodriguez to get to the Cardinal leadoff man. And Luna shows why he can be so dangerous in late inning situations with his very good speed. Steals a bag. Walk to Rodriguez. Eckstein could be a Short hero stop. tonight. David Eckstein. Feet and showing appreciation to David and everything he's done this year. Batting 340 after the sixth inning. That's tied for third in the National League. He's 
He has a 351 average with runners in scoring position. And now third on the team with his, his RBIs. Outfield is very shallow, so you could have a bang-bang play at the plate with a base hit. Eckstein could win it. Two outs, two runners on. First pitch is a foul ball. David very good hitting with two strikes, so went up there to see any pitch he liked. He took a hack at it. You just get one in the air and get it over the outfielder's heads. How about right center? Big gap out there. White's delivery on 0 1. X time. Base hit in the right. Here comes Luna. He's being waved in. And the magic number is down to three. Cardinals win it 5 to 4 in the bottom of the ninth. tonight we've been participating in our FSN round trippers for relief FSN Midwest has donated $1,000 to the Red Cross for every home run hit in tonight's game tonight there were three round trippers raising $3,000 for hurricane relief so far in combination with home runs from other designated major league games on FSN regions across the country over $20,000 has been raised and donated by FSN to help the victims of Hurricane Katrina it wasn't a home run it was fought off by David Eckstein. Luna was taken off with two outs, and he would score the game-winning run. The Cardinals win it again in dramatic fashion. Five to four, your final. Seems on out stroke, slicing into right field. Restovich was shallow. He made a pretty strong throw, but Luna a little bit too much speed, and a good Cardinal victory. Five to four, the Cardinals win it. David Eckstein, a hero tonight. He'll visit with Jim Hayes coming up on the postgame show. Midwest Sports Report comes your way now. Now, your Midwest Sports Report, presented by Push Light. Good evening. Following another dramatic victory over to the card post-game edition of the Bush Light Midwest Sports Report, I'm Rob King. And I'm Brent Stover. Coming up, the latest on Mizzou and Illinois football, but we start with the Cardinals. We go right back to Bush Stadium, game two of this series. No score in the first. Jimmy Edmonds, deep left center, two on shot. And hot shot, Sports Bar and Grill wanting you to know who's hot shot's out. It's Edmonds. Four, three cards in the seventh. The card put it out. Tyler Johnson in, gives up the loop single to right. Freddie Sanchez scores. Ties the game at four apiece. Bottom of the ninth we go. 4-4 four, four game. David Eckstein says, I'll close out my tab, please. Game winning. Base hit to right field at the plate. Hector Luna is safe. And that magic number is down to three. Your Dan McLaughlin say, dramatic fashion once again. Cardinals get it done. Night after night, Rob, you talk about it last night. They get four runs on six hit. They take advantage of opportunities. When they get guys out there, you don't know what it is, but somehow over a 162-game span, more often than not, they're able to get that clutch hit, make that clutch pitch, make that clutch play in the field. And whether it's John Rodriguez last night or David Eckstein tonight, I mean, this Cardinal team is getting it from everybody. It doesn't have to be Albert Pujols tonight. It wasn't Chris Carpenter. We've seen him be better than he was tonight. This is a team, and we can't overlook the job the bullpen did tonight. This is a team that finds all kinds of heroes to win games for him. So it, another impressive win for the Redbirds tonight. Man, Chris Carpenter didn't have his best stuff, but he's still a 21-game winner. And there's going to be nights where you go out there without your A game. Uh, he still was solid enough. Let's go to Jim Hayes at the scene, brought to you by Ace Mortgage. Jimmy? David Eckstein delivering the game-winning hit. You're hitting over 350 with runners in scoring position. Does your approach change? Um, no, not really. Uh, the only thing that changed is I'm a little bit more aggressive. You'll see me swing a little bit more early in the count and just try to get a pitch to get to the outfield. 
you guys carved one off the magic number. I guess you're keeping real close count of that. Um, yeah, I think it's everywhere now. Everyone's telling us you try to not even worry about that because that stuff takes care of itself. But even when you're driving on the highway, you see the billboard. They keep pulling the numbers down, but that's a good thing. Chris Carpenter didn't have his best up. I know you guys were hoping he could pick up an, another win. He's in a battle for the Cy Young. Oh, without a doubt. You know what I mean? When he steps on the mound, you want to give him that win because he definitely deserves the Cy Young. You know, it, these other pitchers are going out there doing a great job keeping track. So we want to keep him ahead of everybody else, but we just couldn't do it tonight. You guys are so close to clinching this thing. Can you taste it? It, it, it's, it's starting to get there. You know what I mean? We still got, I don't know what the Astros are doing tonight, but at least three right now. So, um... It'll be nice. David Eckstein, thanks. Thank you very much. Guys, let's go upstairs to you. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Congratulations to David Eckstein and the Cardinals. Magic number, Al, is uh, now down to three after two dramatic wins. Yeah, and it could be down to two if Florida holds on and beats Houston. But these were two great wins. The Cardinals have been playing great baseball. The fans have enjoyed every second. But these last two nights, and this was last night, that John Rodriguez was a hero as he drove in the winning run, Schumacher, right there in the in the bottom of the ninth inning and it doesn't get any better than tonight the same thing David Eckstein fights off a pitch in the inside and Luna got things started with a two out rally to win this one the Cardinals have now defeated the Pirates 19 out of the last 22 meetings and we understand that Houston did lose their game so now the magic number has been reduced to two and uh, unfortunately tonight and Jim touched upon it in his interview there with David Eckstein is the fact that Chris Carpenter can't get win number 22 so he's tied with Dontrell Willis at 21. Yeah I mean it's at least he didn't get a loss yep and uh, you know he struggled out there he competed he gave up an awful lot of hits he gave up four runs that's very un Carpenter like but uh, you know the bottom line is his team won and that's all that I'm sure he counts and, and hopes for in that ninth inning we both said it that uh, the Pirates may be doing the Cardinals a favor by walking Rodriguez no disrespect to John Rodriguez but David Eckstein is hitting 350 your leadoff man is hitting 350 with runners in scoring position this year he's also fourth or third in the uh, ball club and RBIs and just continues that very clutch hitting and so it was just a, another great outing for David but for all the Cardinals they have playing inspired baseball and as I said they can feel it they know what they have to do there's still plenty of games left but uh, they are on a mission to go deep into October Brad Thompson picked up the win he's now three and zero, oh, and Rick White took the loss he's four and seven for Al and Jim I'm Dan let's send it back to the studio guys thanks very much Tony the Roots your phone calls coming up in time now for our connection of the day brought to you by U.S. Cellular bottom of the second Yadier Molina take Ian Snell deep to left for solo home run number eight of the year for Molina giving the cards a three nothing lead they go on to win five to four U.S. Cellular we connect with you time for the Marlins and the Astros two nothing in the fourth and that is a drive to right center field and that ball is out of the yard Bottom of the fifth, we go same score. Adam Everett leading off against Josh Beckett sends this one into the seats and left. Another solo jack ties the game at two apiece. In the seventh, same score, one on one out. Chad Qualls into pitch. Paul Laduca unloads to left for the seats and two run blast number five for Laduca. And the Marlins win with a final of four to two. And again, that's why the magic number is not three. It is now down to two. And, and there there's a look at that big dude <laughs> right there. Number two, we're right at we're Johnny at the spot. We're keeping up with what's going on. It's at the moment. I mean, a moment ago, our graphics person had that thing at three. But you know what? You find out the Astros lose. And if you're a Cardinal fan, you feel really good with that number at two. All right, Braves at the Phillies. Bottom of the second. Phillies up one to nothing. Ryan Howard facing John Thompson. Takes him deep to right center field for a solo home run. Howard already with six home runs in September. What are they going to do with Jim Tomei? Phillies up 2-0. Bottom of the six, tied to four, one man on. Mike Lieberthal, shallow single to right field. Howard will avoid the tag on his way home and score. Philly wins 5-4. They have now won three games in a row. For the Nationals at the Mets in the third. Nats up 2-1. Preston Wilson singles to left off Tom Glavin. Brad Wilkerson scores from third. Glavin Gave up three runs and seven innings. Nats up 3-1. In the fifth, Nationals lead 3-2. Jose Guillen, deep right off Glavin. Victor Diaz, back of the wall, leaps and robs Guillen of the home run. Mets still trail 3-2. Bottom of the eighth, same score, two runners on. Chris Woodward hits one to third base. Vinny Castilla starts the 5-4-3 double play to end the inning. And the Nationals hold on to win with a final of 4-2.
And that means the Nationals still hanging in there in the wild card standings. The Marlins one game up on the Phillies, one and a half up on the Astros. The Nationals four back. Milwaukee probably still has a chance, six games back. Hey, you get down to the Mets and Cubs, six and a half back. Probably still think they have a chance, but those are your four teams to keep an eye on in the wild card race. Major League Baseball news and notes. Morgan Ensberg returned to the lineup. Still unknown. He's got a hand contusion. The Strohs could use him, and they could use him soon. Alice Gonzalez not expected to be back until Friday for the Marlins. Ronnie Cedeno for the Cubs says he's done for the year with a broken hand. Dusty Baker says he may not be done just yet. Here's a look at tomorrow's starters. Oliver Perez, the erstwhile ace for the Pirates until he kicked the laundry cart after losing to St. Louis and broke his toe. He is making another start as he tries to work his way back. Going against Jason Marquis, whose ERA had reached a season high of 4.67 after being knocked out after three innings on August 23rd in Pittsburgh. Since then, he's made three starts and pitched two complete games while giving up just two earned runs in 26 innings. He's got a good arm, and he's going to be a good pitcher, and uh, he's learning what he has to do to, to be a good pitcher. And, um, uh, you know, the rough rough spell that he went through, uh, it, it's really a positive that he has bounced back from that because oftentimes adversity is, a, is the biggest obstacle to being success successful, you know, dealing with that a, a adversity, and he, he's done a good job with it. All right, time now for Tony LaRussa. It's brought to you by Jack in the Box. Here's Tony in his live comments following the game. Stolen base and then a uh, blooper. That's a tough way to lose. It's a great way to win. Uh, yeah, I thought he was, he was good there at the end. I think you know, he probably fatigued that one inning. You know, he made, got some pitches up and give him credit. I mean, they were aggressive all night long. Yeah, it could be a different game if we're down a run. You're right. That's, uh, and the play Mabry did to pick it. I mean, that's a winning play. I mean, uh, Davis will be the guy all year long. You know, your ninth inning, you want the ball hit to him. I mean, he's, he's, he's playing so well. But that is a tough play. The runner runs well. And a, a tough catch and throw, and then another catch by Mabry. He's hitting, I think, over 350 with owners in scoring position. Is he just a different hitter with guys? No, he's, he's just, you know, a lot of times he gets a million in scoring position. He's trying to drive in the run. Other times he's working the count. Uh, he goes to two strikes a lot. That's not a high average. But uh, amazing number for us. We've got RBIs in the 50s. I mean, that's an amazing number for a leadoff man. So can't give him enough credit. Well, <laughs> we worked hard to get here. Uh, we really have. The club has been so relentless. And uh, but yeah, you know, we're in a great position. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't get any weak stuff and say, but I just, you know, you get to, you know, almost three weeks of play, and it's just, the club has just been absolutely relentless, as strong-minded as you can be. Like I say, this club is mentally and physically very, very tough. Is Park feeling okay today? Just... Yeah, no, he was he was feeling fine. He just, you know, I think at the end, he, he fatigued I mean, as soon as we started throwing the seven, we said that was going to be his last inning. He could, you know, he just, he's working hard, and I, I think, rather than Carbon, you just got to give credit to the Pirates. I mean, you know, they, they did the same thing yesterday. You know, they came out aggressively swinging. You know, Mulder's got 15 wins. They got about 10, 11 hits over him. As competitive as Carpenter is, it looked like he still wanted to stay out there. Well, yeah, I, mean, I don't think Chris ever wants to come out of the game.